Right. Um, dear friends of Love of Volleyball, Amor del Volleyball, Pro del Volleyball, I'm pleased today to talk with a former national player of the United States, winner of two Olympic medals um, in Los Angeles 84 and Barcelona 92. She played professionally in Italy, in Brazil, and was introduced in the Volleyball Hall of Fame in 1998. Um, and after an, an enormous career as an athlete, um, she's still tied to volleyball today. I mean, I'm talking with Paula Weishoff. Hello, Paula, how are you? Hello, so nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Fantastic. Um, let's start with this conversation. And um, please, Paula, tell me about your, your, your starting in volleyball, your youth. Um, where did you start playing? Um, who were your first coaches? You know, um, back in the day <laughs> when I was younger, I did mini sports. So I started with ballet mm -hmm. and then um, I did soccer, softball, track, gymnastics. And then later on, I found volleyball. And it was kind of ironic. Uh, my first year in high school, they kept me on the team because I was tall. Um, and then by my sophomore year, I was starting on the top team and I absolutely fell in love with volleyball. So I would say probably my second year in high school on, um, that's how I got into it. So my high school coach, Dave Westberg, was the one that really got me started, um, gave me a chance. And uh, our club system is a little bit different. It's not professional. So I played a couple years of club volleyball. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got recruited to go to college. So um, I got a scholarship to go to USC, uh, and that's how I started um, into college. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I, um, some um, weeks ago, I interviewed a Brazilian ex, ex national player. She has a club in Texas, and she told me a little about this um, system oh. of you in the United States, um, the, the importance of volleyball, female volleyball, in, in mm -hmm. school and, and later in college. Um, tell me, Paula, and how and, and when did you um, join the national team and, and how was the sport life of national uh, uh, teams for national you? Team. Yeah, so go back to so the uh, Brazilian <laughs> player, that's Cellini, right? Yes, no, 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 no. Uh, sorry, she's a uh, Brazilian. Brazilian, Cellini, right? In the in which she lives in Texas and has a yeah. um, the club, um, it's Instinct Club, so Instinct, it's the name. Yes. Um, I got to play with her one year in Brazil. I love her, adore her. She's such a sweetheart. So just wanted to say that. Um, so when I went to college, then um, the national team, uh, Ari Selinger had asked me to come to a tryout. Mm -hmm. So I went to a tryout and that was my first experience. I had never traveled outside of the United States. I think I'd only been to the state of Colorado Mm -hmm. That's not true, actually. I, I went to Colorado for a volleyball tournament, okay. uh, but I flew. So that was my first time that I flew was Colorado. Um, so at 19, I went to the national team and started training eight hours a day, seven days a week, six days a week. We had one day off um, under Ari Salinger. Um, my teammates, great teammates. Actually, I'm going to see Debbie Green today. I'm going to go. It was her birthday. I missed her birthday. So I'm going to go have dinner with her. I just talked to Rita Crockett. Uh, she just talked to her on the telephone. Uh, Flo Hyman, another great from that team, uh, was just full of talent. And, you know, I'm happy to say that I'm still friends with a lot of them. Fantastic. And tell me, please, how was this experience in, in your first Olympic Games in Los Angeles? You won the, 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 the silver medal. In, in, against a, a very powerful team of China, but you, you, you also went to the second place. So it's, it's very important um, win for you. How was this experience for you? You know, I can look back now after many years and, um, and say it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I grew up in Torrance, California, which is very close to Long Beach where we played in my first Olympics. So essentially in my hometown, uh, we beat China in pool play and then we lost to them in the finals. And for a long time, that weighed a lot on my heart. You know, um, sometimes I used to say, oh, it was better getting a bronze because you win it than a silver 
because you end up losing that match. But now I think my silver medal is, uh, I cherish it um, a lot more. I think I have more of a growth mindset when I look at that. I didn't fail. What we accomplished was, um, was great. And like I said, with the players that we had um, at such a young age for me, it was just an honor. And I'm just blessed that I was a part of that team. So great. Um, I talked um, also a few weeks ago with um, Miriam Luis from Cuba, and she told me that she was very impressed with um, your team, with Flo Haim and with, uh, with you, with uh, David Green, Rita Crockett, because she admired your, your strength in, in volleyball, um, your power to, uh, or, or your will to, to, to win. She was very impressed with, you, with your team. And we, today we can, via YouTube, uh, watch a lot of, of plays and, and games from this time. Um, how, was, uh, how was it for you as a national player um, to, to, after this Olympics to um, play um, in Barcelona 92? Um, after 12 years, I know, I think, um, to play again with the national team, with uh, uh, many, many things have changed from 84. How was it uh, after this, uh, in, in, during the Olympics? Right. Um, so 84, your first Olympics, you don't really know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You don't know anybody. Uh, very different. And then um, 92, I had played in Italy. So I knew a lot of foreign players, a lot of players that had played in the league. So opening ceremonies was quite different. So kind of go over to the Italians, you take a picture, walk over to the Brazilians, take a picture. Um, that was the, the nice part was um, our coach was um, more open. So we had a little more free time so I could walk into the cafeteria and I could go, you know, sit with, um, one of the Peruvian players, let's say Rosa Garcia, I could go over, sit with her, say hello. Um, so it was a little bit different, new people actually at the Olympics, it was, it was very different. Um, different team, like I said, Terry Liskevich, um, he was a little more open with us. We didn't train eight hours a day, six days a week. It was more, that was kind of the mentality, train smarter, not longer. Okay. Um, so we trained four hours a day. We did conditioning. Um, we had a little more time off, a little, few more vacations, things like that. Um, and again, we had Kim Odin, Karen Kimner, Elena Odin. I mean, T. T. Sanders back then. That was her name. And um, Tara Cross Battle. Mm -hmm. So again, playing with all these great players. I just was watching one of those matches um, against actually Brazil. <laughs> Um, and I was like, oh my goodness, look at us, you know, the two different styles, two different coaches, um, but still just the same, just the teamwork, how you connect, you know, it was just, it's special. And again, being able to have those friendships for life is really important. Exactly. For me, it's, as I told you, it's, it's the same. I played as a young person as a young player in school and today have the, the same team with the same friends we said the, the, the same jokes and, and and we know each other very well and um, volleyball ha has this volleyball um, uh, makes uh, us a uh, um, group persons i think so and um, tell me paolo please um after um, you 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 tell us um, you played in italy and also in brazil how, how was this like to share with another um, um athletes from or another stars from volleyball. How was the the atmosphere in the court, outside the court, and and, and, and this experience of you as, as a uh, professional player? Um, it was. I think I grew up a lot. I learned a lot. Um, I went over. I was 22 at the time when I started in Italy, and I my parents were very strict. Mm -hmm. My coaches had been very strict, and here I am making all my decisions by myself. It, it was, um, so I grew up fast. I learned a lot. Um, uh, I got to play with a lot of really fun, great players. Uh, we were supposed to actually go to Italy this summer, but uh, we're not allowed to go because of COVID. Um, so unfortunately I don't get to go see my Italian friends, uh, hopefully next summer. Um, and then, so from Italy, I went to Brazil mm -hmm. and then Brazil was, uh, I was only there for a year, okay. but that was also very special. Selene, China, 
on a Mosier. Um, and it was just wonderful how they took me and Karen Kimner actually were on that team from the USA team. And they just took us in and took care of us. And then ironically, Karen and I ended up going to Japan. Okay. Uh, so I also played in Japan. Uh, Ari Salinger, who had coached me in 84, was uh, had recruited us to go over there. And um, you had talked about Maria Luis earlier. I did get the pleasure. Uh, Karen had got hurt our second season there. And so guess who got to replace Karen Kimner was Maria Luis. Um, what a wonderful person. Just adore her. For her, just to step on the court, her humility, um, just how she treated people was, was exceptional. So um, again, I'm blessed to just have played with some outstanding, not just players, but people. People, exactly. And tell me, um, you told about your, you trained with um, Ari Selinger that he has a very different style as the, the coach in, in, in Barcelona. In, in, in which way what was it different? The, the many hours of training, the, the, the perspective mm -hmm. of, of, of the division of volleyball, what was the, the difference between them? Um, I think respect-wise, I respected both of them. Mm -hmm. Ari's style, I guess you could say it was more um, how Japan trained, uh, okay. Korea, China, they trained reps over and over and over, and you train for long periods of time. Maybe you played less and you trained more. With Terry, we did less reps and we played more. So we did a lot more six on six. So for me, I was lucky because I had the base, the basics when I went to Terry. Um, so I could fit into his system very well. Um, the harder part is on the national team, if you didn't have that training going into just the six on six, I think you had kind of a cap on where you could go. And then if you weren't um, motivated by yourself to get the extra reps, you kind of hit a cap at a certain point. So I was lucky that I had the training uh, with Ari that then I could apply that with uh, Terry's philosophy too. So um, I think they both work. And I loved and respected both of those coaches. They taught me a lot. Fantastic. And tell me, um, after your life as a player, um, why did you decide to continue as a coach? Or how was that process for you? Um, so 97, mm -hmm. I remember um, I, I had played in Italy, uh, sorry, in Japan. Okay. It was my last season. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? <laughs> and then again, another exceptional person, pops into my life. Her name is Lisa Love, mm -hmm. and she was a SWA, so Senior Women's Administrator okay. at USC, and she was also the coach. And she, uh, I was up there playing in the alumni match, and she said, would you like to come back and get into coaching? And I said, I'm not sure. I never thought I really wanted to be a coach, um, but I would love to look at the opportunity. Uh, so they paid for my schooling because I only had one year. So I left USC after one year and I didn't graduate. Oh, so I went back and that's how I got into coaching. So 20 years later, I graduated from college <laughs> and that's really when I started my coaching career. Um, so I learned under Lisa, uh, Jared Elliott, he's at University of Texas now. Uh, Nancy Samara were a few of my mentors as I got into coaching. In this experience as a coach, um, what is, is it for you? How do you live it as, as a coach, as a former player? Um, because one of the many, many, many per, uh, players as me or many friends, after volleyball, we make another things. We study and, and, and work in other, in other, other works. But to continue in tight in volleyball, how is it for you? I think I just had the right people that led me and um, showed me, opened the door, mm -hmm. which led to a passion. And it's very different. I mean, if you look at my videos as a player, how intense I was, how I didn't smile. Yeah, um, <laughs> you're very and then as a coach, <laughs> Right, and as a coach, I'm very calm. A, a lot of people say I have that demeanor. I don't get pissed off that much or angry, mm -hmm. I guess, as you say, that slang. Um, as a coach, only effort and attitude are kind of get me 
riled up a little bit, but it was a player. I was a little more feistier. <laughs> That's probably not good English either, but I was a little feistier. Um, but yeah, coaching is just a passion. I mean, you can't be on the court. You have, it's like a puzzle. You have to figure it out. Offense versus their defense. How's your defense going to stop their offense? What players, where do you want to put them? How do you want to develop them? So for me, I love games. I love puzzles. I love putting things together. And it's kind of my approach for coaching. I don't always get it right, but I love the, I love the process of it. What you say is very, very important um, about the passion, the passion that we put in, in things we do. In volleyball uh, is, is a passion for me and many, many persons, thousands of persons, millions of persons in, in, in the world. Um, and, and what you say is very um, remarkable. I, I think I have um, seen or watched many, many um, games from the national team, from the female national team from the United States, the men national teams. And I, I, I always thought um, that the trainers were always, or fast always, um, very calm, as you said. Um, the Italian uh, trainers or the, or the Russian trainers uh, are very, uh, they shout very loud, uh, loud but, but the, the, the American trainers are very calm. I, I don't know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a school of trainers in, in the United States or, 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 or your philosophy of training, I, I don't know. I think there probably are some screamers and yellers. You probably just don't see them. Um, <laughs> each, each coast has their philosophy, um, how they want to train. but. Um, like I said, again, I was lucky. I went from Ari to Terry. Um, I've got to coach under Hugh McCutcheon. Um, so for me, I just, you know, it's just one great person after the other that I can learn from. And it was funny because at one point someone asked, what did you learn? And I was kind of like, what do you mean? What did I learn? Like, I just keep absorbing everything. It was kind of a, a funny, I can't tell you exactly what I've learned. It's like every single day, something new comes up. Um, so for me, it's like a sponge taking it all in. And then I think the hardest part was trying to develop my own philosophy. Mm. So you have the training part, the rep part, then you have the play part, then you have, you know, I, I think there's a lot of rules now in college. So I think you can't yell and scream and punish and do a lot of those things that maybe were around when I played. Uh, so you just kind of develop your own style and you keep morphing. I think during these last three months, I've read maybe five, six books mm -hmm. just, um, and then USA is doing a high performance. So I was watching that. Um, I do coach club. Um, our club director did a wonderful job of just bringing in mentors each week. And so just again, rethinking my style, how I want to do it. Um, if we have a season this year, what I want to do with that team. Uh, but we have to see, uh, that's not up to me. <laughs> that's out of my control, but I have a good idea. It's been fun just kind of going back and looking how we would do it differently for the next season. Exactly. And, and what, what, what team are, are you training now or, or directing? What is your, your actually um, job? Uh, so I coach uh, at Concordia University. Okay. We are in CAA, but we're Division Two, and then I help coach a little baby twelves. <laughs> I love my twelves; they're so cute. Um, I'm the assistant coach for that, and um, I didn't know if I how I would be coaching the youngers, but mm -hmm. I really, really, really enjoy it. Um, they have my heart. It's it's fun. And how you, how do you see volleyball, uh, women's volleyball in the, in USA today? The national team. Well, you, you told me a little bit about the, the college or, or, or school volleyball. How do you see the volleyball in, in, in the United States today? Oh, Cart, well, there's just been, like I said, from Terry to Ginny to Toshi, it's kind of changed hands a little bit. But then Hugh, and now you have Cart, and they've all had a system that goes from A1 to the A2, and you have multiple teams in your training all these young kids. Um, Karch has done a wonderful job with the mm -hmm. culture of our national team. Um, a really big focus on how they treat each other. And um, I've been talking to Erin Virtue quite a bit. She's done some stuff with, um, not with Concordia, but with the club that I'm a part of. And it's just, it's just wonderful. I'm trying to implement a lot of those same things uh, with our group. 
Um, because at that, at that high level, you have to have something, something different. Everyone's training hard. Everyone's training smart. Everyone's, you know, but if you can get that team, that culture piece, you have an edge. And I think Karchin, Karchin and his staff are doing a wonderful job. I mean, I know Marv Dumpy is also a part of that coaching staff and he's just a wonderful man to talk to too. If you want to talk volleyball, talk to Marv. He's a good guy. And Karch, of course. It's a dream. It's a dream. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, as I told you, um, or maybe not, in Chile, we are uh, also volleyball fans, but we are very, very few volleyball players. And we were were very shocked in 1984 as the national team, the men national team, defeated the Brazilian. Um, and so we started to know about the, 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 the American volleyball because not many people know about American volleyball here in, in the south of the world. Um, my father, um, he was national trainer. He has the opportunity to see, to watch the, the, the US um, woman volleyball team in Peru in 1982. So he, he knew something and, and he always received some um, video recording tape. And so we saw the, this, these games. But after, uh, after um, uh, Los Angeles, we, we began to use to, to see the national teams, men and female and men in international um, tournaments and win them or be uh, always at the top 10. Top 10. Um, and after this, uh, I always have, um, have wondered, and I saw um, a little um, weeks ago, an interview um, just to Doug Bill. And the interviewer asked Doug Bill about why in the United States, the volleyball uh, is not so important or so popular, so, or so media, media rich as uh, basketball or baseball or American soccer. Um, what do you think it's so? You know, it's always, it's, that's kind of been, how do we, how do we get into, how can we break that, that barrier? Mm -hmm. I think um, maybe looking at uh, tennis and golf, they've done a nice job of carving out. I think it has to do with marketing and publicity and um, being able to put your focus there. I think, you know, now our athletes that like you, they're well known where before they weren't. So I think we're kind of getting there, we're breaking in. Mm -hmm. And I think it just takes just a little bit here, a little bit there. And um, we should be on that national stand, hopefully. Because I, I, I also, I, I always have um, wondered um, when, a, when a, a nation or a, a United States have so many great athletes, so many medals, so many important volleyball in, in, in school and college, why? You don't have clubs, which you don't have a, a, a volleyball national um, league, um, because when when um, countries like ours or, or, or mm -hmm. other countries don't have many medals in international level, it's 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 more uh, logically. But um, you have um, Olympic medals, you have world medals. Um, it's mm -hmm. very very interesting to know. Doug Bill he told he think um, that's because you have so many uh, great uh, uh, sports and you have no more space for, 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 for volleyball for mea for, for more um, sponsors or, or, or yeah. more um, tv transmission but um i i i always have watched the national teams of the united states the, the female um national team and also the the college volleyball and it's a great thing to to, to watch to know that you're making a great great work um, and, and, and what do you think it, after, the, after COVID um, uh, will be? What, what, what your, uh, your thoughts about it? You know, kind of to go back to, you know, to, to go into that segue. Mm -hmm. I think for volleyball, for well, men's volleyball is down. So, uh, but women's volleyball, they feed into college. Yes. Okay. And then at college, it's either you go to the national team or you're pretty much done. So I think it's a little bit different where football, baseball, and basketball, mm -hmm. they use college to go pro because they have the pro league. So until yeah. we can get a pro mm -hmm. league started, a lot of those women end up stop playing. Uh, like I said, the national team has done a really good job of creating a nice pipeline so we've kept more women in, but we're probably losing them to, like you said, get married, 
have children, get a job, and then it, it, their goal isn't to go to play professionally because we don't have a league here. Right. So a lot of women, um, it's tough to want to go overseas. It's, it's tough to go and play then come back. Um, I did that for 11 years. Um, and it's, it's tough. Like I have a whole life in Italy and I have a whole life in America. And so it was kind of like for a while I was saying I was going home when I was going to Italy. And then towards the end I was saying, Oh, now I say I'm going home when I go to America. So it was kind of like living two lives there a little bit. You kind of get torn. Um, now with COVID, we just have to see it really it's out of our control it's in god's hands um I, I know that everybody wants to start sports we want to have sports in the fall uh nba is trying to start up soccer is trying to start up um we just have to see what's going to happen we're all kind of in a tough situation um and again i'm not the one in control not i'm not a politician and i'm not god so <laughs> i'm kind of just I wish we would have sports, but at the end of the day, you know, is our sports more important than people losing their lives? So we had to see how it plays out. Hopefully a vaccine comes in and we can get not just sports, but the economy everywhere. Just, you know, even the mentality of people right now, we're just, you know, it's tough. It's tough times. So trying to get that back and get back on track could take a couple of years. Exactly. It's very, very true what you said. <clears throat> Here in Chile, it's, it's a, a, a little the same, or mostly the same. We have many people who are dying with COVID and the economy is suffering very much about this. So, well, I may, I'm trying to make this little, um, in, these interviews and, and to send people around the world a, a little happiness with volleyball. Um, And so uh, I make this interview with, with very uh, much uh, with fun, with, 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 with pride and to honor um, great players like you um, who have uh, um, made many, many great things. For example, you were uh, introduced in the Volleyball Hall of Fame. Here in Chile, we, we not, not uh, um, know um, um, uh, much about this Volleyball Hall of Fame. It's not a very um, Italian or South American um, used to have a um, Hall of Fame of, 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 of things. You have the uh, Rock Hall of Fame, I don't know. Yeah. And how was this uh, for you uh, uh, to be in inducted in, in with many great players and, and coaches in this uh, Hall of Fame? In 1998, I, I remember. Right. You know, it's it's where volleyball was was founded, was in Holyoke, Massachusetts. So that is where the Olympic Hall of Fame is. And I had never, I have never been there until I got my award and I went out there. And it's a pretty special place. I wish a lot more people knew about it. I wish it was um, on a bigger stage. It was a little, it was more important. Uh, they've been opening it up and a lot more foreign athletes um, have been inducted and it's just a pretty special place. You know, I wish, like I said, it was on a bigger platform or more people knew about it because um, it is very, very, very special for a sport. Exactly. We, um, um, as I said, not very clear. My English is not very well. I am, um, as I, I, I are many other people around the world making this this kind of conversation or, or, or having fan page to honor um, uh, great people, great players, great um, sports sports uh, men, women um, of past time because we this time we didn't have internet. We received sometimes some magazines or some videotapes, but now we have the possibility to to watch all these games and to talk as we we both now um, with great players and and. and athletes so um <clears throat> for me it's a great honor as i said before um well paula i i will thank you again and again for this conversation for me it's a, a as i told you a, a very special thing because i i love volleyball my my, my fan page is love for volleyball and mm -hmm. i always um, are trying to to rescue and honor people who make so much for volleyball you're still still making it and so um i'm inviting you to to watch the fan page to comment to to post things because mm -hmm. uh, in these times i have i i i'm sure we can uh, make um, can make friendship around the world more easily 
than before. So I, I, I want to thank you, send you many health to you, to your family in, in the United States, and wish you the best. Um, that's uh, what I wish for you, and, and thank you so much for the conversation. Yes, thank you so much for thinking of me and remembering me. I appreciate it very much. Whatever I can do to help, just let me know. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Paula. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.